And for this Windows setup, we're going to be learning about a tool called WSL. And to introduce that to us, we have my friend Basili, who has done amazing work helping me on some of my past courses, and he's going to be helping us here today. So take it away. This tutorial is going to be useful for any Windows version from Windows 10 and above. Let's get started by installing our code editor, in this case, Visual Studio Code. So let's type VS Code on the browser and hit enter. Select our version for Windows, select the destination and click save. And the installation process is going to be the same as any other program. So let's select and accept the agreement, click next, add code to the path, create a desktop icon, next and install. This shouldn't take a lot. And this is how the editor is going to look like the first time we install it. We can customize the theme, create shortcuts and sync with another devices. And if you want to go deep into Visual Studio Code, well, I suggest you to pause the video for a moment and go through all these steps one by one. Now we could 100% go forward and install the rest of our tools in a Windows environment, but Vasily is actually going to explain to us that the Windows environment isn't really actually the best way and the best place to do our installations. Microsoft has definitely increased their support for developers in the recent years, but when it comes to smart contract development, there is a better option to consider, using WSL, the Windows subsystem for Linux. Trust me, it's a game changer. You see, smart contract development often involves working with tools and utilities that are commonly found on Unix-based environments. While Windows has come a long way in accommodating developers, there can still be some challenges when it comes to running certain command line tools and setting up the right development environment. Not mentioning that if you want your code to run on any machine using a Unix-based system, Mac and Linux, is better for your developer needs. Here is where WSL shines. By installing a Linux distribution through WSL, you can access to a full-fledged Unix-like console right on your Windows machine. And don't worry, you don't need to be a hacker or wear a hoodie to make it happen. It's actually quite simple. So let's do it. For that, let's open the Windows terminal. This is a pre-installed application on Windows 11. And something you can easily install through the Microsoft Store on Windows 10, just type Terminal, and here you are going to have the Windows 1. So let's install WSL by typing WSL minus minus install. Hit Enter. This is going to trigger us a admin operation, and the installation is going to start. And here we just have to wait until the process finishes. Once the process is done, this will require you to reboot your operating system, so I'll see you on a second. Once rebooted, this is going to automatically open this terminal, and the installation process is going to proceed. Now you have to input a new Unix username, for me it's going to be Chromeware, and then you have to set up your password. Don't worry, the password is always hidden on Linux operating systems. And as easy as that, we already have an operating Linux terminal inside our Windows machine. So we can now close this. Now if we open a new instance on the Windows terminal, we click here on this drop down arrow, we can have now this Ubuntu shell, on which we are going to install all the development requirements we are going to use to run the course. So the next step is to make Visual Studio Code compatible with WSL. So let's do that. Let's go to the extensions tab. Let's search for remote development and install all these extensions. This is going to automatically install the compatibility to connect our Visual Studio Code with WSL. And as you can see over here, I have a new icon called Open a Remote Window. If I click here, I can directly connect to WSL. However, there is an easy way to do this. Let's close. Visual Studio Code, and on the Linux terminal, let's just create a new folder, for example, mkdir solidity course. Let's move to that folder, and now let's open Visual Studio Code inside this folder. Just type code dot, hit enter. This is going to install the latest server for WSL on Visual Studio Code. And once this is done, we are going to have a new instance of Visual Studio Code, but using WSL. 
let's just trust the authors and as you can see here I'm getting this WSL Ubuntu banner over here and it's because I already connected this with the Linux instance so you have two options from now on you can start using just the Windows terminal to execute all the things we are going to need or you can use the integrated terminal which comes with Visual Studio Code just go to terminal new terminal and now we are going to have a terminal using the exact same WSL instance so we can start using sudo commands for example sudo apt update and this is going to work properly now just take something in consideration maybe you are going to develop all your projects on a folder called development inside your documents on windows and you can do so however if you take a look to the linux terminal with the ls command as you can see here you are going to have just access to the local files and folders inside of the wsl instance and i highly recommend you to do that because of course you can do something like type in the address of your local development folders and use the projects from here but the communication from the wsl console and the local windows files are actually quite slow so I prefer just to keep simple and use all the folders inside WSL. Remember that you have to just manage simple commands such as ls to know all the folders on the current directory and cd to navigate through them. Now, if you go back to your VS Code and you hit terminal, new terminal and open up a terminal, we're going to want to then install Git. We're not going to use Git for this lesson. However, we will definitely be using it in the future. See if Git is installed, type git dash dash version. Sometimes Linux will automatically come with Git installed and you'll see something output like this. However, if you are the ones who decided to keep using PowerShell and just Windows instead of WSL, don't forget to go to the official Git page and install it for Windows. The process is the same as we did before, really standard, just the common sequence of clicking next and of course please to read the license agreement and now if you've made it this far you should be able to follow along with the mac and linux instructions as if you're running on a mac and a linux even though you're running on a windows just be sure that whenever you're in your vs code you take a look at the bottom left and make sure you're on wsl ubuntu like i said before if you want to run in powershell or in a windows environment you're more than free to do so but like i said if you've made it this far huge congratulations awesome work